Good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, I feel grateful to Dr. Anuj Maheshwari and Dr. Verma for giving me this opportunity. I'll be talking about large vessel vasculitis approach to diagnosis and management. Large vessel vasculitis means inflammation of aorta and its major branches. There are two types of large vessel vasculitis, giant cell arthritis and Taka SO arthritis. And in both, there is granular meters inflammation and thickening of the vessel wall with compromised lumen leading to decreased tissue perfusion. There are certain mimics of large vessel vasculitis and these mimics we can very well confuse with the primary large vessel vasculitis. The inflammation of aorta and its branches can occur in Bechet's disease, Coggan syndrome, rheumatoid, SLE, ankylosing spondylitis, relapsing polychondritis, IgG4 related disease, sarcoidosis and then connective tissue disorders and certain infections like syphilis, TB and HIV infections. Then giant cell arthritis is, is inflammation of medium sized and large uh, sized vessels with predisposition to affect the cranial arteries. It is more common in people of North European descent. And there are two types of large vessel vasculitis, cranial vasculitis or large vessel vasculitis. So GCA is of two types, cranial and large vessel. This is latest criteria just came in market. Uh, it is uh, just 10 days old. 2022 American College of Rheumatology and Rheumat uh, European Alliance of Associations for Rheumatology classification criteria for uh, giant cell arthritis. And when we are applying this criteria, we have made a diagnosis of medium vessel or large vessel vasculitis and we have excluded the mimics, which I narrated in the previous slide. And absolute criteria is uh, at the time of diagnosis, the age would be 50 years or more. And these are the additional clinical criteria. Points are given, given against each and every clinical criteria. The morning stiffness in shoulders and neck, sudden visual loss, jaw or tongue claudication, new temporal headache, scalp tenderness, abnormal examination of the temporal artery, then uh, ESR 50 millimeter at the end of one hour or more, maximum uh, CRP 10 milligram uh, per liter or more, and a positive temporal artery biopsy or hello sign on temporal artery ultrasound. This has got the maximum points plus five bilateral axillary artery involvement, FDG PET activity throughout the aorta. If you sum up the uh, score of these 10 items, a patient is scoring six points or more. We can classify that patient under the GCA, that is giant cell arthritis. Specificity of this criteria is 95%. Other features of giant cell arthritis are constitutional features. The patient may present to us with low-grade fever, fatigue, loss of appetite, weight loss, arthralgia, arthritis, myalgia, etc. The patient may come to us with a, a PO or a PO. The poly polymyalgia aromatica is seen in 40 to 60 percent of the patients. Aching and prolonged morning stif stiffness of the shoulder and pelvic girdle can occur. Pulses and blood pressure in upper and lower limbs may be reduced. Then vascular preview may be heard over the carotid, subclavian, bilateral axillary, abdominal and femoral arteries, aortic root dilatation, aortic insufficiency, thoracic aortic aneurysm and its rupture can occur. There can occur uh, ocular cranial nerve palsy because of involvement of the vasa nervosum leading to diplopia, acute monoocular blindness, transient or permanent can occur, retinal, choroidal or optic nerve ischemia lead to partial or complete vision loss. This is a thick, tender, and cord-like uh, temporal artery in one of my patients. The Takasu arthritis is idiopathic, chronic granulomatous inflammatory pan arthritis of the aorta and its major, major branches. The women outnumber males in a ratio of 3 to 4 is to 1. It has got highest prevalence in Asian countries, including India. It has got self-limited monophasic course in only 20%. In rest of the patients, uh, it is progressive, relapsing, or remitting course. Uh, Takayasu arthritis has three phases, uh, stages, three pre pulseless disease, which is characterized by constitutional features, just like the uh, constitutional features I, uh, I just described in the giant cell arthritis, then inflammatory phase, when there is vessel wall inflammation, stenosis or fibrotic phase, there, are, there occurs arterial stenosis and ischemic symptoms. And again, when applying this criteria, this is latest criteria. Uh, published 10 days ago. Consideration when applying this criteria, we have made the diagnosis of large vessel vasculitis, mimics of large vessel vasculitis excluded, and absolute requirement is age 60 years or less at the time of diagnosis. This was earlier 40 years, now it is 60 years, and there is evidence of vasculitis present on imaging. 
Then additional clinical criteria, female sex, angina or ischemic cardiac pain, claudication of extremities, vascular buoy, reduced pulse in upper extremities, carotid artery abnormality in the form of carotidynia. The systolic blood pressure difference in the arms is more than 20 millimeter mercury uh, or uh, more. And the additional criteria uh, on imaging, one artery involvement, two artery involvement, three artery involvement, according to that points are given. Symmetric involvement of the paired arteries, abdominal aorta involvement, renal or mesenteric involvement, it has got maximum plus three points. A patient is scoring five points or more, we can classify under uh, Takayasu's arthritis. Specificity of this criteria is 99% and classification criteria we, we can, should always apply when we are recruiting patients for uh, research trials where we want to be 100% sure that we are dealing with the Takayasu arthritis or large giant cell arthritis. If we are sitting in the OPD, even if a patient is scoring three points, we can diagnose that best uh, patient as having Takayasu or giant cell arthritis. So, classification criteria. Uh, and diagnostic criteria are not synonymous. The other features of clinic uh, Takayasu arthritis is involvement of the subclavian artery, which is seen in 90% of the patients. Left is affected more than the right, and there can occur upper extremity claudication, unequal pulses on the two sides, bruit or over the narrowed arteries. Raynaud's phenomena is occasional, so is the uh, gangrene because uh, a good collateral circulation develops. Then skin involvement, erythema nodosum, pyoderma gangrenosum, ulcers may occur, carotids, vertebral arteries, retinal branch arteries, aorta involvement in 50% of the patients. According to that, the patient may have visual changes, syncope, transient ischemic attacks, stroke, brui, carotidinia. Then uh, the patient may have, because of aortic root involvement, aortic insufficiency, hypertension, abdominal pain, heart failure, CAD, and CVA. Renal artery stenosis is very common. Brui over the renal arteries may be heard. And celiac and mesenteric artery uh, involvement leads to postprandial angina. The investigations the patient has uh, leukocytosis, thrombocytosis, normocytic, normochromic anemia. I remember one of my patients presented to us with fever and 23,000 counts. The patient was not at all toxic. And when we examined, there was brui over the carotid arteries. There is high ESR CRP, though it may not be elevated in all the patients. IL-6 is a better marker than ESR in these patients. And uh, low albumin, high alkaline phosphatase may be there. High C3 and C4 may be there. And novel biomarkers like MMP3 and 9, serum amyloid A, osteopontin, NT, pro, BNP, calprotectin uh, may be raised. But these are not routinely available. Imaging is preferred over temporal artery biopsy according to the current guidelines. Imaging of the aorta and its major branches is recommended ideally before or within one week of starting steroids and we can find stenosis, occlusion, dilatation or aneurysm and these are the various imaging modality which, modalities which I will be discussing one by one. The ultrasound with color Doppler. This is a first line imaging modality for the diagnosis of giant cell arthritis according to the current ACR and ULR criteria. GCA, there, uh, we uh, should uh, look for the temporal and axillary arteries. Takayasu, subclavian carotids are more commonly affected. Should, we should look for these uh, arteries. And uh, aortic inflammation, we, uh, color Doppler is not recommended unless until we do the trans ultrasound. Nowadays, there are modern ultrasound machines with a resolution of 0.1 millimeter and it can detect small changes in the wall thickness. This is typical halo sign. The specificity of this halo sign is 96%. There is uh, this is lumen and hypoechoic vessel wall because of inflammation and with uh, uh, steroids it uh, disappears. This sign disappears in two to four weeks. And this uh, uh, this is uh, this image is courtesy of Dr. Shinoy uh, from Kochi. Then compression sign. If we compress the uh, uh, patient with giant cell arthritis, we can still vi uh, visualize the lumen. The compression of uh, the uh, lumen with the transducer, we can still visualize the lumen. And this is this has got a specificity of 100%. This is compression sign. If we uh, press the normal uh, uh, artery with transducer, it, the lumen will disappear. So if it persists, it is compression sign. This is CT and Joe, we can find uh, various types, type 1 to type 5, depending on which part of the aorta is uh, involved. If there is involvement of the coronary arteries, we write C+. plus. If there is involvement of the pulmonary artery, we write P+. Plus. And radiation exposure is uh, more, so the, it is not favorable for the younger patients. 
we can uh, see the coronary artery involvement cardiac aneurysms and specificity of this criteria is 100 percent this is ct angio and you see the subclavian at its origin is showing narrow uh, uh narrowed uh, lumen then mri and uh, uh, mr angiography it is the modality of choice in takayasu arthritis uh, the mr angiography uh, it is uh, yields uh, sensitivity and specificity of 100% for Takayasu without any radiation exposure and MRI shows enhancement if the vessel wall inflammation is there we can also see the lumen and cranial uh, giant cell arthritis uh, there is high resolution MRI. MR and you will find the stenosis and then here uh, again there is a stenosis from the arch of aorta the vessel uh, showing and new, this narrowing 18 fluorodeoxyglucose uh, uh, pet that is pet uh, scan can show the arterial wall inflammation in the pre-stenotic inflammatory stage in takasu there is involvement of the common carotid pulmonary artery which is more than that seen in the giant cell arthritis. The increased uptake uh, of FDG may also be seen in infections, atherosclerosis, and besides the, the vasculitis, we can see the changes in atherosclerosis also. And it is not recommended for the assessment of cranial arteries. This is the PET scan. Uh, we compare it with the liver uh, uptake, and you see here the increased uptake is seen in the thoracic wall aorta. And this is PET CT scan and it is large vessel giant cell arthritis we all know pad cts have limited access high cost long procedure time and PT, the pad ct have more radiation than ct alone but the functional image is better this is a hybrid pad mri showing uh, the increased uptake in the arch of aorta subclavian arteries thoracic aorta and the radiation exposure is much less than uh, of uh, than the pad ct uh, only 20 percent and good to assess the disease activity also this is why MRI showing the thickening of the wall uh, because of inflammation and uh, also uh, the large vessel vasculitis showing uh, the increased uptake in the aorta the histopathological diagnosis is done only when there is uncertain uh, pre-test possibility and ultrasound has failed to confirm the diagnosis of giant cell arthritis uh, then the biopsy should be done of, of the temporal arteries because of skip lesions which are present in the temporal arteries it may be missed in 44 percent of the established giant cell arthritis the biopsy should be one centimeter in length because of the skip lesions bilateral biopsy are not routinely recommended but if uh, there is strong uh, clinical suspicion and uh, the one side uh, biopsy does not show changes then we can go for the contralateral uh, temporal artery biopsy and in large vessel giant cell arthritis temporal artery may be normal enough to 20 42 percent of the patients now what are the changes transmural inflammation occurs there is fragmented internal elastic lamina uh, the giant cell infiltration occur which coalesces to form a giant cell so these are the changes which can be seen in uh, temporal artery in uh, giant cell arthritis we should monitor the disease activity by symptoms of ischemia, clinical findings, ESR, CRP, imaging, we will show vessel wall edema, human diameter, but the false positive and false negatives do occur in uh, imaging. And this is Indian Takai Sur clinical activity score. The performa can be downloaded for the internet and it is a very good uh, uh, form for uh, monitoring <laughs> activity. Remission means absence of all the, well, everything normalizes. The management of large vessel vasculitis, we should manage the cardiovascular risk factors like hypercholesterolemia, diabetes and all. Then confirmed uh, case of giant cell arthritis, we should start with uh, 1 mg per kg of uh, prednisolone and reduce the uh, prednisolone in such a way that at the end of one year we reach 5 mg per day. If there is high risk of adverse events with prednisolone like diabetes, hypertension or osteoporosis or there is relapse or refractory disease, then we should start the glucocorticoid sparing agents. These are the various glucocorticoid sparing agents and we should escalate the prednisolone dose if possible. And if there is sustained remission we should continue the steroid taper and the uh, if there is threatening diplopia or vision loss then IV methyl prednisolone pulses 250 to 1000 milligram per day should be given for three days antiplatelet drugs are to be given when the patient has uh, angina or MI or the transient ischemic attacks or the patient has a stroke 
surgical interventions ideally should be done when the patient has quiescent disease if that uh, disease is active and there is critical ischemia or dissection or uh, there is a aneurysm then we can uh, uh, go for the surgical intervention in such uh, critical situations if the patient to comes up. to us with Rakayasu, we, we have made the diagnosis, then we can start with the prednisolone. Localized disease, we can start with the lower dose of prednisolone. When upfront, we should start steroid sparing agents, unlike in giant cell arthritis. And at the end of year, the dose of prednisolone should be 10 milligram per day. It is higher than giant cell arthritis. If the patient has refractory or relapsing disease, we should increase the dose of prednisolone and we should consider alternative glucocorticoid sparing agents. Like if we, we are giving mycophenolate, we can start methotrexate. If we, we were giving uh, azathioprine, we can start the mycophenolate. And there, if there is sustained remission, which is our target, uh, we should continue steroid taper. And antiplatelet drugs, surgical endovascular intervention, the same indications which I narrated in the previous slide. And these are the various trials showing methotrexate, azathioprine, mycophenolate, tocilizumab, anti-TNF agents, showing clinical benefits, improvement in the ESR and CRP, and there is retardation of the angiographic progression. And these are naturally occurring therapies like resveratrol, curcumin. They have also shown clinical benefit and there is uh, improvement in the ESR and CRP. If the disease is refractory, that is angiographic progression is occurring despite steroids, uh, steroid sparing agents, frequent flares, three or more in one year or persistent, persistent disease, there is need for surgery, so we should use biologicals. Biologicals, uh, whenever there is uh, disease relapsing or refractory, increase the dose of steroids in, um, at the immunosuppressants and biological demand. Uh, then it is given for 52 weeks and if fail then TNF inhibitors may be tried and the TNF inhibitors are infliximab, adalimumab, etanercept and both have shown that the steroid sparing effect and there is uh, angiographic progression which is retarded by both the agents. Giant cell arthritis Indian scenario only 72 cases have been reported and headache was the presenting symptoms, tenderness over the temporal artery and ESR uh, uh, was uh, a high ESR 94 millimeter mean uh, was seen in 46% of the patients. So take home messages, Takayasu arthritis is very, very common in Asian countries, including India. Patient may present as a case of PUO, limb claudication, renovascular hypertension, carotidinia. Giant cell arthritis may be underdiagnosed in India. Therefore, it is important for the clinician not to miss the diagnosis of this rare disease and to prevent the serious complications like vision loss. Treatment should be started as early as possible to prevent complications in both the conditions. And thanks for the patient here.